Welcome back, everybody, here to the New York Jets franchise. Final week of season number four, and this week 18 is just going to pretty much be simmed through. It's really a week that we don't even have to do anything with because we've already clinched the division. Win or lose, we're good to go there. And the number one seed in the AFC is out of our reach. We can't get anything with it at all, so there's just no reason to play this game, especially against a 4-12 team. So we're going to simp through this week. And then go through all the final playoff matchups, the final season statistics, and then some big news at the end of this video. But you can see right now, at the number two seed, possibly taking on the Bills, every team in the AFC, you see right there, will be in the playoffs. There's no, all really going on in the AFC is all about seeding. And it comes down to this AFC North, which is crazy. Bengals right now 13-3, Ravens at 13-3, the Browns at 12-4. Now... The Ravens and Browns will face each other here in Week 18 with the Bengals taking on the Chiefs. So there's a possibility if the Chiefs beat the Bengals and Browns beat the Ravens, the Browns could possibly move up from, you know, the number six seed to the number one seed and vice versa. The Bengals can drop to six. It's just absolutely crazy what can happen with so many of those teams in that same division. Um... I mean, they're better than most teams in the NFL, and you're going to end up with a six seed probably. It's crazy. NFC, a little bit different. 49ers have clinched everything. Panthers have clinched the division. But the Vikings right now, 10-6, and six, have clinched a playoff spot, but not yet the division. With the Bears there, you have the Falcons, Eagles, Rams. Bunch of teams in the NFC. It's a little bit different. But you can see right now, look at this division. NFC East. <laughs> I mean, it's not good. You got Washington and Dallas right now at 7-9, and nine, so they could possibly win, go 8-9, and nine, Eagles lose, and you have an under 500 team in the playoffs. And where you got the AFC, it's just absolutely craziness with the, you know, the records going on right now. So this division, I would say, kind of pathetic right now in the NFC. Um, it's a little bit top-heavy, I think, but, you know, you never know what teams could get in. You got Atlanta now at 9-7. and seven. Trying to get that wild card spot. Like I said, the Eagles. The Rams, I mean, they're a talented team. Defensively, Packers, you have maybe the last run for Aaron Rodgers. Do they, do they get in? They're playing Seattle, so that game could be a winner's in, winner's out. I mean, obviously, the loser's definitely out. But it's crazy uh, what's happening in the AFC with teams that are just hovering around 500. Not a lot of very good records. So let's advance through this week and make, see what these playoff matchups are going to be. So, no surprise, we're taking on the Buffalo Bills for the third time this season, obviously, in our division. Little, it's going to be interesting because it is tough to beat a team three times in one season. It really is. We've had a lot of success against Buffalo this year, but, man, third time, it's going to be interesting. And you can see the playoff matches, and the Bengals drop to five. So, I think the, the Ravens must have beat the Browns, but the Bengals lost to the Chiefs, so the Ravens swap. They go to one. They're the number one seed. Bengals, who've had that pretty much one seed the entire season almost, now dropped to five, and they got to play on the road. San Francisco, they already had that clinch. You got the Panthers. The Packers made it. They are the final wild card team. Minnesota versus Atlanta at three and six. And then you got the Rams going to Philadelphia. So Philadelphia ends up winning that division. And there is your matchups here for the playoffs. So the AFC goes through Baltimore, NFC going through San Francisco. Two very good teams. So let's take a look at the final season statistics here. Malik Willis, 26 touchdowns, 8 picks. Good completion percentage at 73%. Excellent rating at 119.4. And really, you know, he missed the three games. But what he did after that really tough five-game stretch to start the season, it was, you know, still, you know, you got three. You got three and two, lose some games. But you can see, starts off with the two touchdowns. But it's a pick, one, another pick, two picks, another pick. So he... He starts off the season with five interceptions through the first five games. But after that, you can see he was just outstanding. Only throwing three picks the rest of the way and just being pretty much on point. Playing some MVP football like he did in his first season. And showed us that he is the type of quarterback that hopefully can take us to that Super Bowl and win the Lombardi Trophy. So all in all, I would say a good season if he plays those three games. He's close to 4,000 yards, definitely over 30 touchdowns, another solid season. Travis Etienne, who we acquired in the offseason, goes over 1,200 yards, 5.6 carry, 5 touchdowns. But uh, Robinson was the main touchdown getter here on the ground. 13, he 
does have a little bit slightly lower yardage than we're normal but that's just because we were splitting carries a little bit more willis did add seven touchdowns on the ground as well so he always has that ability to get loose and use his feet as for the receivers we have no receiver that goes over a thousand yards but reggie robertson close 997 three yards short he really turned into be pretty much be the best receiver on this team 11 touchdowns the rookie Quincy Buckley, 58 for 853, 7 TDs, good average at 14.7. You know, it's obviously he missed two games as well. Up and down season for some of these receivers. But you know, the numbers are going to be down, especially when we were running the ball as much as we were. But really, we spread it out. Elijah, um, Elijah Moore, 61 catches for 850. Everett definitely had the down year. We spread it more to the receivers. And actually, ETN ended up with 44 catches of his own with only the one touchdown. But... You know, trying to spread the ball out a little more. You know, we don't have maybe that number one guy where Robertson may be turned into that. But we have a bunch of solid receivers, and you utilize every one of them, and that's what this offense did. Defensively, Ashton Davis is going to lead us in tackles with 103 total tackles. And actually, that's kind of a good sign when you only have one guy over 100 total tackles because that means your defense got off the field and got off third downs. That's good to see. And, there's no doubt about it because we are the leader in sacks. But, yeah, Jason Marsh, 23 tackles for loss. Quinton Williams up there with 19. Brandon Smith, 13. Wagner with 15. We uh, definitely made a lot of plays in the backfield and put teams behind the sticks. As Marsh, we challenged him this year. You know, first-round pick last year, not too much he did at all. And we gave him the opportunity. Five and a half sacks last year. We're like, hey, this is your opportunity. This is your time. And first few games we weren't sure but he showed up 15 sacks I think that's going to be number two in the NFL fantastic season that Jason Marsh had but the other one was on the other side we didn't get much from Brennan Kutcher so we traded for Nolan Smith he was in Washington stuck behind Chase Young Montez Sweat that talented defensive line not getting much playing time he comes over here and does a fantastic job with nine and a half sacks on the season Robert Hardison with eight and a half. He kind of slowed down near the end of the season, but had a very good stretch. And Brandon Smith, six sacks of his own. He really was fantastic. And same with David Hayward. This whole defense, obviously the number one defense in the NFL. Now, I have to say the last few weeks facing tough offenses like Minnesota, like San Francisco, it was a tough. It was a tough you know, job to take down those offenses. We did the best that we possibly could, I guess. But... Still, number one defense going into this postseason, and hopefully we can do a good work there. As Levi Wallace, with six picks, actually led the league in picks. So he made some nice plays, but Stingley you could see there with only one. Um, yeah, they just didn't really test him as much. Should we go to the league leaders? You can see Justin Herbert over 5,000 yards. There's Brady at three, Mahomes at two. Uh, a lot of the names you would suspect to be up here. Rattler actually 4,500 yards, not too bad, but... I don't know maybe but he had 20 oh he had 27 interceptions never mind i think the saints obviously losing 15 straight that might be their first overall pick going to quarterback to because i think rattler's only like a 70 or 71 overall so they definitely need to change there so trey lance does lead the league in touchdowns look at tyler huntley 35 touchdowns nine picks in his first year in carolina wow huntley dory mcleod 35 and nine cam mcdougall putting up 33 touchdowns but what this shows you is that it's sometimes tough to really evaluate quarterbacks in men because it seems like whatever rating is, they're putting up 30 touchdowns at least every season. As you can see for the rushing, Christian McCaffrey breaks Eric Dickerson record 2180. Now the new record, he puts up 24 touchdowns. You got Chubb, who I thought at the, the one point we faced the Browns, what do you have around... You know, 12, 1,300 yards at around week 12, week 13, whatever that was. I thought for sure that he was going to obviously break the rushing uh, touchdown, but our record, but he does not. Derrick Henry down here, nine touchdowns after putting up 26 last year and winning the MVP. But yeah, McCaffrey, 24 touchdowns, putting up a fantastic season. Look at all the rushing touchdowns. Eckler with 18, Taylor with 18, Carson with 17, Kareem Hunt with 17. Absolutely crazy. As for leading leaguers, the league leaders in receiver categories, Keenan Allen leads with 101 catches. So that is a bit of a down year. Um, with the extra game, I would su suspect more receivers would have over 100 catches. 
at least be in the 120s and 130s because, you know, guy, the, you throw the ball a little more. It seems like, obviously, you know, sim stats definitely need a fix. There's really no doubt about that. Um, your teams do throw the ball a lot more. You know, there are going to be guys that have a lot more catches, a lot more yards. You know, the rushing touchdowns, it's just crazy. I mean, how many guys do you see putting up, you know, over – I would say 12 to 13 rushing touchdowns. It's not a whole lot. There's still plenty of guys that do it, but not at the pace there, not at the number that these guys doing here. It's crazy. It's like you have like 30 guys that have over 10 rushing touchdowns, and that just is not happening. And you're going to see a huge, the receiving stats should definitely go up, and the, the running stats should definitely diminish a little bit. And I think there also has to be a bit of like a disparity between – between production of offenses. I mean, some offenses, I mean, not every quarterback in the league is going to throw for 30 touchdowns. There's going to be plenty of offenses that just can't do anything and don't put up points. And I think that's the disparity. Like I said, going back to the quarterback discussion, it's just how can you tell if this offense is bad? You know, you can see maybe the rating, but then you look at the stats and the quarterback that's rated a 75 overall, yeah, he throws for less yardage, but he threw 35 touchdowns. I mean, if you're getting that production in real life, the quarterback is going to be your quarterback going forward no matter what. If he, you know, he's keeping the interceptions low and the completion percentage is decent and he's putting up 35 TDs, I mean, he's staying. So it's really tough to evaluate, you know, your CPU quarterbacks in this game for sure because they just put up insane stats, each one of them. And, you know, you need more of that disparity between bad offenses and good offenses. You know, I don't mind if Josh Allen throws for like 40 touchdowns or him or Holmes or whatever, but a guy that's, you know, Tyler Huntley, should he be throwing that many touchdown passes? No, not at all. He should be maybe near 20s, low 20s. Maybe that's it. There's just no way. I don't see that at all. So, you can see as I get away from that rant there, near the end, taking on Buffalo in this wild card round. We faced them twice this season, obviously, in the same division. They have a very good offense. When you got a 99 overall quarterback, that's going to happen. Eight overall. Defensively, they're ranked 21st. I mean, we've had success against them, but they have a lot of talent defensively. Now, we took them on first game of the season to start this off, and we ended up winning 42-21. You see the 21 points there in that second quarter. And this game was pretty much over by the third quarter. As Willis, good start, two touchdowns. No interceptions. We picked off Josh Allen twice. Now, I don't know what it is about Josh Allen in this game, but we've had some very good success against him. Like you said, he's a 99 overall quarterback. Usually those guys just eat you alive, but we've had success against him. And the last time we saw him was week 11, 31-7. This was a pretty much beatdown game. Yeah, they only had 176 total yards, 124 pass yards. Uh, we picked off Allen a few more times. You can see the two picks there. Yeah, he, he just had an awful day. Malik Willis, this is the game he actually got hurt. Three touchdowns. I think this is the game that Reggie uh, Robertson actually just went off in this ball game. I think he had three touchdowns, ETN over 100 again. So what makes me scared about this playoff game is that we've had so much success against this Buffalo team that when you get to the third time, you know, now they have more momentum. We've only, last time we saw them was week 11. They have more momentum. They're in the playoffs. They're rolling. So, you know, they know us. It's not like a, a team they don't know. They know what we're going to do. It's going to be an interesting ball game for sure. You know, you can't take playoff games, you know, for granted at all. Just because we handily beat this team twice this past year doesn't mean that we're just going to go into this playoff game and win. You know, we had one playoff win in our now third. This is going to be season number four. So we're going, you know, trying to finish season number four. One playoff win was last year. That's it. That's all we have right now. You know, we got demolished in the AFC championship game last year. It was just an absolute beat down. The Browns beat us down. Uh, that first, you know, the second year, you know, the wild card game against the Raiders. You know, you think you're going to win that ball game and nope. You don't. As you see, Greg Payton there, he's a star development. So we learned his development there. He is a star. I thought I was hoping he'd be a superstar, obviously, but just a star development. But yeah, the difficulty gets ramped up in the playoffs. Everything is, you know, exasperated. Everything's huge at each drive, each play, turnovers. And it's just, 
tough, especially when you're facing a, a, a very talented team in this Buffalo team. So there is a lot of pressure put on us to try to get the job done because we have a, we had high expectations coming into the season. We thought we'd get to the Super Bowl last year. And we got demolished by the Browns in the AFC Championship game. So we thought for sure that this was the year we were going to get to the Super Bowl. And the expectations were crazy high. And we're here in this wild card round. And with those high expectations come some, you know, interesting things. And we got some news out of the Jets headquarters and possibly some rumors here from Ian Rappaport. As you can see, he has tweeted out that... The Jets' front office has had discussions about moving on from us if we have an early playoff exit. That is huge news. So the pressure that we already have on ourselves to try to get this team to a Super Bowl, which the expectations were, now have ramped up immensely. And we got to get this job done. We got to at least get to this AFC Championship game and put up a fight in the AFC Championship game. We can't have it like last year where it was an absolute... You know disaster it's like we didn't even show up in that game so we can't have that again we got to do our job here against buffalo and continue on and try to get this team to a super bowl so those rumors can absolutely go away and we don't have to worry about it anymore but that is going to do it for this one thank you guys so much for watching the playoff game will be out tomorrow so get ready for that you guys have a good one bye bye